When most people think of molecular electronics in the context of nanoscience, they think of single molecule devices like the single molecule diode, the Avarim Ratner diode that we introduced this chapter with. So then several questions are raised. How do you connect wires to just one molecule? And even if you connect them, how can you make active devices, transistors that are switched on and off? And then finally, uh, a topic dear to my heart, which is the use of single molecules as chemical sensors. The question of making connections to single molecules has been addressed by a number of experimental techniques recently. The top shows uh, a method pioneered by Shadong Sui, a student of mine, in which a uh, single molecule with reactive groups at each end is inserted into a self-assembled monolayer of the sort we discussed in chapter 6 and the reactive molecules then form a chemical connection to the underlying gold substrate. The reactive molecule on top is bound by a gold nanocluster and so then one can contact the gold nanocluster with the conducting atomic force microscope probe forming a metal well-defined chemical bond molecule, well-defined chemical bond metal contact. Another technique, which I'll illustrate with a little movie on the next slide, is simply to trap molecules with reactive groups on each end between a probe and a substrate as the probe is moved back and forth from the substrate. Yet a third technique is to rely on the spontaneous breaking of the bonds between a molecule and a metal uh, contact so one just forms a, a tunnel junction of this sort with the molecule bridged, uh, bridging the gap via reactive groups at the top and bottom end and simply waits for this contact to make and break and make and break spontaneously, the result being this so-called telegraph noise in the uh, current signal. All of these techniques have in common two important features. One is the use of covalent contacts to displace contamination and interfering molecules in the gap between the metal electrode and the molecule. And the second is statistical analysis of the data because single molecule junctions are inherently subject to fluctuations. In this slide, uh, I illustrate the break junction technique in which a gold probe is brought down towards a metal surface containing molecules with reactive groups at each end and uh, when a molecule is trapped in the junction like this and the gold probe pulled away the gold is relatively uh, more plastic than the molecule and so once a molecule bridges the gap the act of pulling the probe away from the surface uh, causes the uh, current to be dominated just by the molecule for a significant distance over which this gap is pulled and the result are little plateaus in the current versus time or equivalently current versus distance plot as shown over here. So you can see the conductance falling and then a little step in here and then a drop and another step and you can see with a repeated number of uh, pulls that these steps occur at exactly integer multiples of some conductance. Here is a histogram where these uh, conductance values are binned and you can see that there is a uh, value at a certain value of current then twice that value of current three times that value of current and so this then allows one to determine what the conductance through presumably an individual molecule is as this second peak or this second step in current here corresponds to two molecules bridging this gap this first peak just to one, and this third peak to three, and so on. So these methods, relatively recently developed, are quite important. To illustrate the problem, I use this slide to show the controversy over the conductance of DNA as a molecule. Papers in uh, really very uh, prominent journals said that DNA uh, is an insulator, a semiconductor, a metal, and you can guess the uh, final result, even a superconductor. 
This is some measure of the difficulty of measuring the conductance of single molecules. With the techniques that uh, I just showed you, of either self-assembled junctions, um, a brake junction, or telegraph noise as it's called, a number of measurements have now been made on molecules of various degrees of complexity. And this table here shows the measured single molecule conductance versus the calculated single molecule conductance based on the density functional methods we introduced in chapter 2. The final column here shows the ratio between uh, theory and uh, prediction and as you can see it's on the order of unity for most of these molecules and therefore these techniques have finally allowed one to say yes it is possible to contact a single molecule and to measure its conductance with some degree of reliability. Here's an example of some very beautiful measurements made using these brake junction techniques. These here are uh, histograms of uh, conductance uh, plotted here on a logarithmic scale uh, for a series of molecules composed of uh, aromatic rings. In the uh, first structure here, the rings are bonded together rigidly, whereas in these subsequent structures, the rings are locked into geometries um, where one aromatic ring is tilted with respect to the other. The degree to which the matrix element between the left and the right electrode is modified by the tilt of these two rings is relatively easy to calculate. From elementary theory, it goes as cosine squared of the angle between the uh, aromatic rings. And here is a plot of the measured conductance versus the uh, cosine squared of the angle between the rings. And one can see for a series of structures that it very accurately uh, predicts uh, what is measured in the single molecule measurements. So it's clear that one can measure the conductance of single molecules and that one can trap them between electrodes in a number of types of devices. Can one make a single molecule transistor? The problem is one of electrostatics. Generally, a field effect transistor will have a construction something like this, where one has a source electrode, a drain electrode, and then in this case, a molecule connecting the two. And finally, under a layer of uh, insulator, a gate electrode. The problem is that if one applies an electric field between the gate and source, so as to try and shift the potential of the molecule, this distance here of insulator must be very small uh, compared with the length of the molecule. And this is hard to satisfy with single molecules. An alternative is to use chemical methods to switch the conductance of the molecule. Possible ways of doing this are electrochemical control of the oxidation state of a molecule and pH control. So let's turn to chemical control of the oxidation state of a molecule. The molecule at the top is an oligomer, i.e. a small polymer, finite length of aniline and so you can see it consists of one two three four five six seven eight uh, aniline repeat units with a thiol at each end so it can be attached to a metal electrode. Now it's well known in bulk polyaniline that the uh, neutral form is an insulator. Uh, if it's oxidized with a two electron oxidation it turns into a conducting form. A second oxidation results in the formation of an insulating form again. So the question is then, can we use electrochemical oxidation of this molecule to form a switch? So we would connect a source electrode and a drain electrode to a single molecule, and then use a counter electrode to drive a polarization at the surface that will result in sequential oxidations of this aniline oligomer. 